I don't care. We need one nil. If we keep down, thirteenth in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when when have we got leads? Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. I hope you are all doing well. Please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell. We are here to talk about Daniel Farker's latest press conference, and for me to give you my live reaction. And the breaking news, the big news on the back of this press conference is that Strauch's season is in jeopardy. Pascal Strauch could be set to miss the rest of the season. It didn't sound good, of course. He did say, you know, that ultimately they were given a decision by the doctors. Either Pascal Strauch goes now and we give him an operation, and he definitely misses the season, or we leave it to see if he can get through. And he's still not training on the pitch. He's still not on the grass. So Farka said, look, 10 days, 10 days. If after the international break he's not good to go, then that's it, he's going for surgery. So ultimately, I think at this stage, I don't think we'll see him. Because even if he comes back after the international break, when's he going to be ready? Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's a good job we've got. It's a good job we've got Ethan Ampadu and Gruyev's been as good as he is, um, because we do sometimes when we're in certain games. Although Gruyev was good the other day, he doesn't have that. It's all lateral. Do you know what I mean? There's no vertical. <laughs> That's how, what I think anyway. He's not as vertical as, say, Ampadu. We have to wait for Ampadu to come from centre-back into midfield to then go into the final third. Do you know what I mean? But then, again, this is the thing. Now Ampadu has the international break. What if he doesn't come through the international break? Then what? Then we're putting Cooper there. So, you know, I would like Strout back, and I would say that once he's up to speed, he starts. But Farker did, did basically say that, like, if after this 10 days he's still not ready, then I want him to go for surgery so we've got him for when we return back next season. So it's clear that Farker really rates Strauch anyway because he's like, look, if if after 10 days he's not going to be ready, I want him to go for surgery so we can have him back at the start of the season. You know? Uh, I can see my man Locks in the chat as well, to Force Nation TV, just praising the T-shirt. While I am, I'm just going to mention... At Mind Leads, um, I am doing uh, get-together through gaming... I did some streams earlier on. I'll be doing some tomorrow as well. I'm going out after this. Um, but if you could sponsor me, I've set a target of like 250. I've raised 40 quid this morning. So big up to everyone that's, you know, joined and, and supported. If you can, let's make sure we smash the target. I know Joe Blackburn's also doing it and he's going live after me. I think he's playing some um, some football manager. So, you know, I will set a redirect up. But if you haven't already... It's in the pinned uh, comment. Just click on, chuck a quid, a fiver, 100 quid, um, 10 hundred quid, whatever, whatever's that. Mm. Um, yeah, big up to Tafosi Nation. Big up, man. Thank you for that. Make sure you go follow Tafosi Nation as well. Um, what I am going to do is just put that uh, redirect link and then we're going to talk about the rest of the presser um, and what he had to say. There was a few bits in there. Um, but like I said, the most disappointing thing is that Strout, I mean, listen, he might come through these 10 days and he might play again, but I'm not too sure. Everything that Farker, it almost felt to me like he was resigning us to say, like, listen, yeah, he's done. He's done, which is disappointing because we could do with him. Any, Listen, I know there's a debate over, oh, should he come back in, etc. But still, he's a body that you need in and around the squad regardless. But here is the team news in its entirety. Um, look, Anthony and Shackleton are back. Neva will start, but it's extra bodies. He did say, though, bad news with Strauch. Not yet back in team training. The next 10 days will be decisive with him. It's a cartilage issue and he's a doctor. May need surgery, but we have to see over the next 10 days. So the first press conference back, it'll be very much first question. 
did Strout get through them 10 days? Is he training yet? If he says no, then we know he's going for surgery. It almost feels like this, Katrina. And I know he praised, I know he praised the medical department, but it almost felt as well like he was a little bit pissed. You know? Um, I think he was a little bit pissed that, you know, because he's probably thinking, well, we should have just sent him for surgery. We've we've prolonged this for no reason. Do you know what I mean? Um, but of course, you have to trust the uh, the medical team. But yeah, like you say, if 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 Ampadu or someone was to pick up a knock on international duty, you'd be good. You know, you'd be good. Um, anyway, he spoke about um, the Wednesday game. Obviously, we prayed now eight days ago. Eight days ago, and I did say he would give them a a few days off, and he did do that, which is good. Good for them, I think. A lot went to see family. Uh, Rutter went to Disneyland, etc. So, yeah, that'll have helped them massively, you know. It'll have helped them massively because we have played so many games of football and it's been so tight and it's just good to relieve the pressure off. But he was asked, what have you improved on since the Wednesday win? He said, in the beginning, it was important to calm the load down. So on Saturday... Um, Oh, those who were in on Saturday who didn't play, uh, they had a pro proper session uh, for those that didn't play the 90 minutes. Uh, we analysed the Wednesday game, allowed the players a few days off after that. Important to calm the load down. After these two days, we started to prepare for Millwall. So after they'd had the days off, brought them back. He said it's going to be a difficult game. Good to have time on the training pitch. Um, we have a good opportunity to prepare in the best way. Uh, especially when you consider the gold results they've had after Neil took over. Now, I have done a preview. It's pre-recorded. I'm going to put it out tonight or first thing in the morning. But I don't know if you've seen Neil Harris's comments. He's saying, I've got a good record against them. These are the team that I look for in the league. I'm really excited. My players will be pumped up. That's, you know, you need to be ready for this game. So Neil's, um, you know, shouting from the rooftops about it. And it is a positive that Leeds United have had eight days or some time on the training pitch to deal with what will be a tough game against Millwall. We should beat them. Of course we should at home. Um, but, you know, um, they will be tough. They will be tough. Uh, he was asked, Millwall away win compared to differences now. Well, there's massive differences, isn't there? They had Gary Rowett in charge. We beat them. They then had another manager, and they're now with Neil Harris. It's a totally different setup, do totally different style uh, of play. He did say it'll be difficult at this team. Um, at this time, they're strong in set pieces, which they were in the reverse fixture anyway. We know that's what they're going to do. Uh, they'll slow the game down from minute one. The keeper will take care. Just Neil Harris knows. He will say, right, you're quiet in this crowd down. You take your time. Let them get on the ref's back, etc., etc. You know how this is going to go. We've seen this movie before. It's important for me that Leeds United score within the first 25 minutes because that's what we've done in a lot of games. If we can do that, we killed the game. We've seen against Huddersfield, we had an opportunity. We didn't take it. We draw. I think it's important we score early. Uh, he says, look, Neil Harris knows the club inside out. Uh, he gets the club. He gets the club, Danny. Uh, they have got 10 points in the last four games, though. That is very impressive. He almost said, uh, Fark said they're back to the best in terms of what, what you know, Millwall are. And like Loft says in the chat, Neil Harris equals shish house. Yeah. You know, I actually put on my, um, I actually put on my, uh, my thumbnail, like, spoiler alert. If anyone's going to spoil the United's party, it'll be Neil Harris. He's done it before. He did it in the League One playoffs. He scored the goal. You know, uh, uh, down at the den. He's done it in games at Ellen Road as their manager. Um, so this is the guy. He did say they'll be dangerous on the counter with set pieces. Obviously, there's Jan Fleming flying at the moment. Billy Mitchell back in midfield. Tanganga's having a good season for them as well. He said they'll be compact and competitive, good counter pressing, and I expect a tight game. Yeah, I do as well. Uh, if I'm honest, I did say 2-1 on my preview, but then like sort of changed it because we need to win by two clear goals and went 3-1. But it probably will be 2-1. Um, yeah, Matt said, if Sunday goes like your FIFA game earlier, then I'll be hiding behind the sofa. But imagine the late winner from Matteo Joseph off the bench, though, Matt. Come on. you got that to look forward to. <laughs> he said, what are the differences then between the Leeds team at the Den and now? I forget who asked the question. He said um, confidence is much better now, which it is, if you think. We played them in August, I think. Um, the early stage of the season, you know, we were we were just finding ourselves, if you like. But he said, you know, they, they'd had two difficult years. Same with us as a, um, uh, as a fan base. Um, so I had to change their mentality and winning becomes a habit. And that's what Leeds United are doing now. Look at 2024. We only know how to win, you know. We only know how to win. 
Losing is not in our vocabulary. It is not there. We will be there. He said, we've worked a lot on our principles and how we want to play. We've developed younger players. And then, obviously, you've had Rodon, Ampadu, Griev, Kamara, uh, all playing better. You know, you've got Gray, Somerville, James. They all came out of situations where they did not play a lot of football. Uh, it takes a while to find that rhythm. If you think about it, Rodon, hardly played. Ampadu, over in Italy. Griev, Germany. Kamara, you know, uh, not playing at Rangers. No pre-season. Gray, with the under... Under 21s, Somerville, um, bits and bats, James on loan at Fulham. They've all come back. This is why I will never, ever, ever have anyone discredit this manager. And all of them fans, all of them fans, content creators, whoever you like, that dis, dis, that disgrace Daniel Farker's name was some of the tripe they were coming out with. Need to hang their heads in shame. Hang their heads in shame. I almost feel like you're. I almost feel like saying to them, "You are not allowed to celebrate promotion. <laughs> you cannot. You must not." <laughs> um, but he said, "Look, you cannot find your rhythm straight away in this position. It didn't take us long, did it? Remember all that time I used to say August, 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 and everybody go, you can't blame August. You can't blame August.' Imagine we got to replay that that month now." Guess where we'd be, folks? Already top. But people told me that month don't mean shit. Mm. Um, he said, we're more and more in the rhythm now. Like he said, winning is a habit. We have developed a lot since then. All credit to my players for being open-minded to the way we want to play. We have gained proper, proper fitness levels. Yeah. Remember, Jesse said they were overtrained. Fak came in. He's almost trained them to be Elza levels. It is what it is. The man knows this league. But I'm just going to make a prediction for you now. In the uh, just, just to put it out there, the people that criticise Farker or did, this is what I mean: the difference between agendas and and having an opinion. As soon as there's any sort of unrest or we lose in the, pre they'll be saying he's not cut out for the Premier League. <laughs> Jamie says it's as if we've never dropped points other than August. I mean, Christmas time, yeah, but if you had August again, then points wouldn't have mattered, Jamie. Um, do you see what I'm saying? Because we we lose to Birmingham with arguably the worst side Leeds United have had since before Bielsa. Um, we draw against Cardiff, all these sort of things. Anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? doesn't matter. Um... Anyway, Farker on promotion race, bringing the best out of Leeds United. He says, you never know. Sometimes you can be over-motivated over and a little nervous. Could that be Leicester right now? It's important to find good balance, yeah? Um, yeah, Mr. Dodo, exactly. Content creators, the same as well. They started to change their opinions and that, but straight away, as soon as anything happened, it was bang. I'm a switchback. Um, keep the faith. Anyway, he said it's important to find good balance to play with fire in the heart, but stay cool in the head. Fire in the... I can feel the thunder in my heart. Bit of Leo Sayer there. So fire in the heart, but stay cool in the head. Remember, remember, he's been there, done that, wore the T-shirt. He didn't wear the T-shirt. He fucking created the T-shirt. He created the T-shirt, Farker. Um, this league is all about consistency, and this is what teams at the top have proved in a remarkable and incredible way. It will be a tight competition until the end. We're looking forward to this period. We are licking our lips. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> ah, Clarice. Uh, Farker on Arches England recognition. Here's some more receipts for you mother lickers, right? Do you remember when we were told repeatedly that playing Archie at right back is stunting his growth? Remember that? It's going to hamper his confidence, stunt his growth, stop him developing. Well, guess what? Guess what? The England manager was talking him up starting. And don't go along with this tripe that he's doing it because of Scotland. He doesn't need to do that in the press. He's doing it because he's an absolute baller. He's an absolute baller. Yeah? Absolute baller. 
So, remember this as well. When you question this manager, yeah, the most important topic is not so much talking about what happens on the pitch, his game, his consistency, also his personality, how his behaviour is and how he handles all the praise and spotlight in a humble and down-to-earth way. Gareth is very experienced and knows this game in a top way. You don't have to be a football expert to know how good Archie is. Do you remember when we were told he's only in the side because of his name? <laughs> e God. Oh, he can't play right back. He's no good. He's... You don't have to be a football expert to know how good Archie is. Alhamdulillah. It's not a surprise there are positive comments. I'm not worried about actually handling these comments because he's so down to earth. I don't sense a difference at all. He is 18, meanwhile. He can be with us in the dressing room now. That's important as well. Think about it. Up to this point, he's not been able to share the, 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 the dressing room. You know? Not being, you know, so so now he's it's even better for him. Um... Farker on whether going top would change the dynamic. Obviously, it's a different kind of pressure. Remember, if we hit the top, if we beat Millwall by two clear goals, if we hit the top, it's a different kind of pressure. Am I worried? No, because we've got Farker. He'll keep the feet on the ground. It's less than he'd be worried. Their manager's coming out, losing his head, talking about it's a big game for them. How's, how's your results gone since then, boss? <laughs> so... Farker on whether going top would change the dynamic. He said it's a bit of a difference if you have to chase or bring the lead over the line. I think especially this season it doesn't change that much. The other teams are showing such consistency. The table position wouldn't change our dynamic or position that much. Yes, there's a chance to improve our position, but just because in the end Leicester would have a game in hand. But remember, points win your prizes. Remember we were mocked by Southampton fans for celebrating winning games when they had games in hand. Well, guess what? They didn't win them game in hand, and they're in fourth. He says, I'm not over-interpreting the league position too much. What is priceless is the three points. We keep chasing the points tally and the number of wins we want to have. I think he said 26, right? I think he said 26. Um, remember this as well, right? He said, I will look at the table at game 40, right? The way, the way that the... Games will work now. If Leeds United win their next two games and take us to game 40, guess where we'll be? Top of the league. <laughs> How class is that? This guy's seen this movie. He predicted this shit. Remember, he created the t-shirt. He didn't just wear it. He created it. He's seen it before. Again, Ampadu seems to cruise. How difficult to keep him fresh. Remember, as well, how much criticism he got. How much criticism he got for... play. Don't play Ampadu. You know, he's playing too much. And we, we even spoke to an Norwich fan and it was like, we need, well, Ampadu looks, he doesn't don't even break a sweat if we're being realistic. If we look at all the players on that pitch, Arch is the one that I go, ah, he's all right. You know what I mean? He's all right. But he has some science behind it. So he said credit to his personality, his attitude. That shows him cruise control. Quite impressive with his consistency. Otherwise, we could not be there with such an impressive defence. His leadership is remarkable. Um, he says he's always on the pitch. He looks prepared. I did use the cup game at Plymouth to leave him out. And even then, he was disappointed to sit out. Very, fair, very, very professional and mature for his age. Let's not forget, he's still only 24. Rob Page at Wales was talking him about him as a future Welsh captain. He says, this is why we can show consistency. Not the only player in the spotlight, but remarkable because he was not always playing so many games. We have to assess each week and every game, and hopefully he stays in great shape with no injuries. I'm not concerned about Ethan, if I'm honest. Don't forget to smash a like on the video, folks, and please do sponsor me as well. Leeds mind. Um... He was then asked a question about monitoring the load of each player after the international break, because obviously Sunday's our last game, then we don't play till the 29th, I think. Something like that? No, there's a game before that. Is that right? Yeah, 20 off. 22nd, something like that. He said a lot of uh, a lot of top, top guys here with lots of data, Rob, the physios, nutritionists, lots of information for me to channel that, bring the experience and gut feeling in. Every player tells me I am too fit and they, uh, I am fit and that they want to play in every game. That's natural, right? So I have to be switched on um, onto how they do in their daily work. Uh, take your individual impressions into account. 
but they're with the best possible decision. So far, so good. We have many games. The weekend after the break will be crazy. Good Friday, the kickoff, of course. Obviously, Friday. And then we play on Monday. Um, and he did say that some players even struggling to make the game because Junior Firpo recently signed, signed, but uh, declared for Dominican Republic. Someone sent me a video of that on Instagram, and I thought it was ASICs. I was like, oh, what are you showing me? And then, yeah. Big up to Andy, by the way. Thank you for donating, broski. It means a lot. Thanks so much, brother. You know that. Uh, please do donate. Get together through gaming for Leeds Mind Charity, folks. Um, so, Junior Firpo might not even be ready. It's like those that play in South America for Liverpool, etc. When he's always kicking off because the likes of Luis Diaz and Nunes, they don't. That'll be the same, right? Dominican Republic? I don't know if it's in South, South America, but. <laughs> um, geography is not my strong point just like maths but yeah um, so we'll have to see how the international break goes I am going to do a watch along of Finland versus Wales because all our boys are involved right and, and I'm an adopted Welshman right now um, they hate us we don't hate them right I don't mind although I did celebrate when they got knocked out that time do you remember because Kiefer Moore was chatting beans anyway yeah let's hope Kiefer Moore gets injured um, and just to finish up, he says, lots of difficult selection decisions for Sunday. How much do you think about Millwall or the games ahead? Uh, he says, my experience is to focus on the next game and the best lineup for that game. Once you have a period like we had with four games in 10 days, you have to see the next task. But take into account that two and a half days and the next game is lurking. Not possible to play every second of four games in 10 days at the top level. Um, the international break for several players after Millwall 12 days until the next game cannot think for one moment about Watford before the Millwall game listen I think the breaks come at a great time for us we will find out the other side of the international break what is actually happening with Pascal Strauch will he miss the rest of the season who knows will he be a loss yes of course he will let's look at, at, at the end of the day if we don't receive any injuries then it isn't that big of a loss, if that makes sense. Because the way we're performing right now, it's amazing. And, and I agree with Daniel, get him out of surgery, get him ready for next season. But if we were to get any knocks and bruises, then it would be a loss because Cooper is a massive drop-off from, from in terms of structurally and the system and what we need from each position. Or if Gruev got injured, then then what? We're moving moving parts around. You'd probably put great, but will it work as well without a proper number six? I would argue not. So, you know, we, we're in hope and prayer season that he can make it through, but it isn't going to be that drastic provided we don't get any more injuries. We have enough right now to get through the rest of the season. Nine cup finals to go starting on Sunday. I will release my preview out tonight. Um, tomorrow we're going to do Ipswich versus Southampton, three o'clock. No, Ipswich versus Chef Wednesday, up the owls, yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's do that. Uh, and then Sunday, Leeds United play. Um, I'm 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 off out for the afternoon now. Uh, so thank you all for supporting the channel. Please do smash a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course hit that notification bell. And I'll see you all in a bit. Peace out. Love you all. Enjoy your weekend. See you over the weekend.